Lung cancer researchers in Singapore are working to improve treatment and care outcomes for Asian patients under a fresh $25 million tranche of funding. The project, known as Clarion, will study methods for better risk prediction, early detection and personalised treatments. It will help researchers at the National Cancer Centre better understand why lung cancer behaves differently in Asian patients compared to their Western counterparts. More than half of the cases in Singapore have never smoked in their lives. Lung cancer kills three people each day in the country. Now, the leader of the study joins us now to share more, Professor Daniel Tan, Senior Consultant at the National Cancer Centre Singapore. Professor Tan, welcome to Singapore tonight. Um, it is striking that more than half of the cases in Singapore have never smoked in their lives. So why is it that lung cancer for Asian patients is often driven by genetic mutations instead of smoking? Okay, so thanks for having me on the show, first of all. Um, and to address that question, you know, I think while smoking currently remains a well-known risk factor for lung cancer, um, due to successes of smoking cessation campaigns, we've now seen reduction in smoking-related lung cancer, but increased relative prevalence of lung cancer in never smokers. Uh, and this is exactly the type of uh, lung cancer that are seem to be driven by these genetic mutations. And in fact, in Singapore, over half the lung cancers we see in the clinic are uh, in never smokers. And uh, as to why these mutations tend to occur more commonly in East Asians, this is exactly one of the key questions that we hope to address in our recently awarded grant, Clarion. Mm, and, and how do environmental or lifestyle factors interplay with genetic risk? Yeah, and I think this is again something that more recent studies have begun to illuminate uh, some of the contributing factors, including uh, environmental exposures, for example, to pollution and particulate matter. Um, and one of the key uh, drivers and promoters of lung cancer development is actually uh, information that sometimes can be a result of inhaled particles that lodge in the airways um, mm -hmm. and, and, are, and, and that uh, process promotes the development uh, of these cancer cells. Um, and in, in the context of patients who had not had exposure to tobacco smoke, uh, sometimes there are uh, some of these gene, genetic alter, uh, abnormalities that are f found in normal airway cells that then develop into cancers. Oh, we are also seeing a rise in vape users in recent years. Um, to what extent could this also lead to a rise in lung cancer cases, especially among younger Singaporeans? Uh, so certainly a concern. And, you know, it was a common misperception that vaping may be safer compared to cigarette smoking. Um, however, increasingly, we are seeing some of the negative health effects of vaping, uh, including triggering pulmonary diseases such as asthma or chronic obstructive airway disease. And uh, through the inhalation of the vapor, uh, the harmful chemicals can actually be, be deposited in the airways, again, triggering inflammation, when, which I mentioned earlier can be a central driver of carcinogenesis um, in development of lung cancer. So um, while you take probably longer term studies to identify this association, it's certainly a, 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 of high concern uh, of the uh, effects of vaping on the instance of lung cancer in the future. Uh, let's also talk about the research uh, project Clarion. It will receive a fresh $25 million tranche of funding. So how will this boost of funding uh, differ from and built on the results from the previous rounds of funding? Yeah, so we have had uh, the benefit of working within the team for the last 10 years now. Um, and uh, again, some of that has laid the foundation in order for us to, you know, generate some of the early insights that we have into this uh, unique uh, Asian lung cancer. And the hope here is now we can scale our efforts to, and in fact build out more multimodal data sets. So data sets that are have more richness of data. And we can do this across Singapore and in the region, consolidating um, genomic imaging and clinical data in order to gain deeper insights into uh, Asian lung cancers. 
This will also enable us when we consolidate this data to develop risk prediction algorithms, uh, as well as identify clinical trials that are specifically tailored to um, individual risk strata. And from these insights, um, we and, and we hope to be able to uh, actually develop new therapies uh, when we have this and then uh, basis of uh, our own genetic uh, genomic data uh, in order to develop better uh, biomarkers in the clinic as well. And, and last but not least, um, we hope to continue to expand our lung cancer screening efforts uh, through low dose CT scanning uh, for early detection of lung cancer, hopefully to enable a stage shift uh, in the ensuing years in Singapore. Uh, why is Singapore taking the lead for this kind of research to look into Asian lung cancer patients, Professor Tan? Well, you know, I think in Singapore, we've had the benefit of uh, sustained investment into our biomedical infrastructure. And uh, in, over the years, have actually become a, a fairly a productive trial uh, site center uh, in, in Asia. And um, it, this combination of elements really puts us in a good position to be able to uh, deepen some of the insights that we ha have already early insights that we've had uh, from the work initial work in the last decade. Um, I think part of it is really the proximity and the interconnectivity of the different agencies in Singapore that really allows us to be able to accelerate uh, and iterate some of the findings that we see both in the lab to the clinic and then back to the lab again. So it's very much a unique environment that will that can allow us to accelerate uh, obtaining some of these critical insights uh, and 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 bring these into the bring these uh, novel uh, developments into the clinic. All right. Thank you very much for speaking with us, uh, Professor Tan. Professor Daniel Tan there, Senior Consultant at the Division of Medical Oncology at the National Cancer Centre Singapore.